Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my review of Lost on Planet Earth number two. But first of all, what did you do? Tell them, tell them. I feel like I, I, I have to like lecture myself. So, you know, obviously, you know, keep track of sales every day. And then today there were like almost no sales very suddenly after having good sales, you know, for basically all the other days. And I'm like, what's going on? It's like, oh, I, uh, I didn't advertise my books in the previous two videos from today. So Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar is um, uh, uh, proceeding apace. We passed, you know, the 100,000 uh, stretch goal. So now there's a uh, seven-page Nexus uh, story by me and Mike Barron with art by Aaron Alfici. I'm trying to decide the 125,000, then I'll announce that uh, soon. Uh, pandemic is um, uh, the last two pages are laid out. Uh, and so th that should be done probably this week, the line art. Expendables go to hell. Ah, that, yeah, the lettering. Yeah, that, that's related to this, kind of. Not exactly, but well, no, kind of. I just found out that um, Chuck Dixon, so he has these series of uh, novels called Leave on Kate. I'm, I'm, I know they're de definitely digital. I'm not sure if they're physical. I'm guessing you can't order physical versions. He's been, you know, I get updates, <laughs> but I'm like... <laughs> Do you think I read a book without pictures? <laughs> well, thanks for the credit, but no, actually, I don't. Um, I read comic books. Um, so he's been advertising those. You know, he's been t he's been telling me he's like, hey, you got option. I'm like, good for you there, buddy. Um, and then he, uh, you know, shows the first page. So they're developing it for a TV show. Now I know I always make fun. Oh, blah, blah, this is this is a novel, not a comic book. Um, uh, is uh, I didn't realize the pilot is being written by Sylvester Stallone. That is, I mean, if you're if you don't know, like Sylvester Stallone, if he never would have been an actor or a director, he would have been a fantastic screenwriter. So that was very uh, kind of shocking, exciting to me. And then Graham Nolan, who did this image you see on the screen right here, and did the main story for Expendables Go to Hell, uh, along with a bunch of million other things he's done, he just launched this uh, today. Graham Nolan's The Chenu on Indiegogo looks to me to be like a. a Abominable snowman type of character. So go check that out. Um, and so, uh, oh, and I almost forgot. Boy, <laughs> it's amazing. Like things work, 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 and then they don't. Like you got to show this stuff. So show people getting their books. We actually deliver books, we get them out to you. Um, and <clears throat> man, I got to thank Chelsea again for these amazing covers. I really like the matte. Matte is not shiny. So in all the pictures, everything shows up really well. It's not being destroyed by glare. So um, uh, I think this is a Mossberg shotgun. I'm trying to remember from, uh, got a hunting rifle and a, is that a K-bar? Similar, might be like a, a older version. Here's, um, <laughs> the cats are always like totally just over it. Um, geez, look at this. This is some good company to be in. And then this guy, he, this guy is not even American. He's European. He's like, I'm a liberal. I just think it's funny that there's a Trump uh, board game and I bought it. So there's a good collection of European uh, comics all over here. Electra lives again. I absolutely love that. And then these are the swords from uh, that Slade had in season one of uh, Arrow. That's very, very cool to me. Um, and then this is some, um, actually, this is a pretty cool set of action figures. All right, so thanks for sending that in. So let's get into it. So I have Comixology, which has a lot of benefits. You get all these amazing things, and you also get um, these Comixology originals. So Comixology originals tend to be Tumblr comics, essentially. You got Mags, you got Joe Glass, you got Vita Ayala. It's pretty obvious why they choose people, and it's not for um, sales. But one thing I did notice that I do like, yeah, foodsies, yummy number sins. Um, is that um, Max has been working with the same team on all the Kim and Kim stuff on Morning in America, I think one other project, and then this uh, Lost on Planet Earth, and it really, really shows. Max has not really improved very much, uh, but the, uh, the art team, including just the person, when I say just, like it's not a big deal, even the design, this is a great looking credits page. So designed by Tim Daniel. Um, so I've said a million times, SJWs don't human very well. Um, but this is a good example about 
how they don't do it. And one of the problems is, you know, there's <coughs> that whole thing, you know, uh, is this character I identifiable? Now, SJWs interpret that as if you're trans, you need to translate. If you're black, you need a black lead, female, female. But did anyone watch Star Wars growing up and not identify with Luke Skywalker? Oh, you, you all did. Well, I have a question. How many of you are blonde haired white guys? Oh, a very small subsection. So yeah, you don't have to look or be in any way like a character to identify with them. What happens is human, or what we might even say universal traits, uh, you have in common. You know, Luke Skywalker had that, you know, feeling he was stuck in his small town, his small planet. He had these vague dreams of, I don't know, if, if not really just being great, but just going out and exploring whether it be the, you know, the country or the world or the universe, whatever. He had that dream of leaving his small town and going out and explore. Um, and um, SJWs are really bad at that. Like they're awful at it. Um, and uh, I've talked about, you know, I've read basically almost everything Max is right. And she writes narcissists. She writes psychotic narcissists and she writes non-psychotic psychotic narcissists but they're always narcissists and i mean extremely narcissistic so nobody is ever left with anything to i mean do you ever go yeah i'm a huge narcissist too like even people who are they don't say that also there's not that's not their dream their dream might be to whatever be on broadway and that would be like a fame, but it would also be like a competition. It's really hard to get any kind of acting gigs. And, you know, you got to be all these things got to line up. But these are literally like you notice these common themes, you know, not only, you know, it's not just like the, the, the violence, but even when you take out the violence, like nobody's likable, like um, and it just leaves you with this kind of just like sad feeling like why? why like who so lost on planet earth was about someone who was going to go into starfleet and at the last minute they freaked out and they're like but what about me and my dreams so they went awol and then we're supposed to really really care about the dreams that this character number one has not said what they want besides just freaking out under the pressure of being in starfleet and two uh everyone is kind of some kind of an asshole so here's the um Here's the graduation and her best uh, friend who is probably in love with her um, uh, is uh, going and she's not going because she's sitting here with her super cool LOL XD, you know, uh, uh, what, what, what was the, uh, all the ABC Friday night comedies, like they had a certain name for that group. They were fairly popular in like the early 90s. Um, so like I said, it's kind of sad. One of the things about SJWs is they write about friends as if they've never had them. And so it's just awkward. Like people just kind of, it's, it's like a TV show. Who is this character? We just met her and she told you everything about her entire life and she's so crazy. Um, uh, so then uh, we're supposed to really care about this boring narcissist <laughs> and we're supposed to real feel, feel really bad for her that she doesn't know what she wants to do with your life you know what that it wasn't like i was watching that movie uh, king arthur from like 15 years ago and the director cast a bunch of people in their 40s to play people who were like 28 who had done like a 10 year you know they had pledged their service for like 10 years and they were coming back and somebody said you you, you cast a bunch of 40 year olds to play 28 year olds and he said well you know they've been at war for 10 years out in the elements that age them. I and mean, that that absolutely is true oh jeez um maybe not so much when you're fighting you know rainy areas in europe but yeah it's that type of stuff it's a lot it's, it's like indiana jones is you know it's, it's not the years it's the mileage um but you know part of it is that you find yourself and you do your whatever your enlistment is two years four years six years and you kind of figure out who you want to be that's one of the classic things people do you know they join up you know the, the, the air force and navy army whatever and they're not sure what they want but they they know they want to go out there and see the world and she, so she had this chance to see the universe and she decided to stay in her hometown it's like the most unheroic thing possible and you could say oh well this is not hero this is slice of life but she's also a boar and she has a giant man jaw and her friends are annoying and 
sometimes translucent. I'm not sure if this is just a bad coloring choice or this character is actually translucent sometimes. So then the uh, female with the female best friend who meets the female lover alien meets another woman who is probably trans with the giant square jaw and they're friends too. They're, everyone's hugging, everyone likes each other. Um, and then we cut back to her family and they're awful. <laughs> they're, just, they're just awful. The dad's mean, you know, the, the, the mother doesn't have any solid plan. Uh, the teenagers, you know, uh, a little shit. Like, I, what are you supposed to, are you supposed to go, it's like, oh my God, I'm an asshole too. <laughs> this is like so me. <laughs> like, I'm a total cunt as well, just like this character. Like, I'm a twat. <laughs> this person's a twat. Like, I'm really connected with these people. It's like, no. You had a person who gave up what something that was very prestigious. And there's all kinds of like, just like, it's kind of like this, like, Occupy Wall Street, like, really lazy, middle-class, like, politics. He's like, we're protesting, man. What are you protesting? Uh, we didn't really get that. We didn't get that far. We're protesting stuff. <laughs> like, it's just like, what? 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 What is anyone supposed to grab hold of? Are you supposed to go, oh, my gosh, I'm vaguely ethnic? This person's vaguely ethnic. I'm going to buy this book. I think some of these people might be gay if they're men or women. I can't tell. Uh, there's a general gayness. If I'm vaguely ethnically and generally gay, why not? Um, so, yeah, it's just, it's, you know, it's, uh, what do you call it? It's, um, it's Teflon. It just slides right off. So I'm not sure what anyone is supposed to do about this besides just ignore it or read it and forget about it. Like, at this point, it just becomes like, why not pick up cans on the side of the road, you know? You're beautifying, you know, the uh, the side of the road. You make a little coin. You get out. You meet people. Get a little bit of sun. Hopefully, not too much sun. And to... at one point, is your writing so without merit that literally picking up cans off the side of the road is a better use of your time and life? Um, so anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe, the Patreon, and the Indiegogos. There's a lot of cool ones out there, which means there's a lot of competition which means I really appreciate when you buy my stuff, <laughs> which means I got to remind you that I'm putting it out there because nobody's going to sit there and go, yeah, so is, 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 does your boy Zach still have any Gogos? I haven't heard. Nope, nope. You know, yeah, I, there's Coca-Cola has advertisements every day, so so should I. Uh, so Expendables go to hell, uh, Pandemic, and then uh, it's fine. Just... It's 1994. I'm on dial-up, you know, CompuServe. Sure, take like 10 seconds to populate. That's no problem at all. Um, uh, but, uh, oh, just hit 2,200 backers. That's very nice. What are we at? Well, this is my second one. And Expendables is at 3,200. Great. These are for graphic novels. This is fantastic. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.